Welcome to the Cloud Accounting Podcast, a show for accountants using technology to make their jobs more strategic and impactful. I'm Blake Oliver. And I'm David Leary. So last week, the big news was that the Supreme Court uh, had a decision out affecting collection of online sales tax. To recap, the decision on the South Dakota versus Wayfair case now allows states to require out-of-state sellers to collect tax on orders shipped into a state, even if they don't have a physical presence such as employees or a warehouse in the state. So massive implications for online sellers, for e-commerce, for accountants and bookkeepers who support those businesses. And today, David and I are excited to have as a guest on our podcast, Mike Fleming, the founder of Sales Tax and More, a boutique accounting firm specializing in state and local taxes. His firm provides Nexus services, registration services, consulting and research, audit defense, sales tax returns, refund reviews, and sales tax technology and consulting. Basically, sounds like everything sales tax. So, Mike, we're really lucky to have you today. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Uh, and, and yeah, we, we pretty much do it all. Uh, it's uh, and it's uh, sometimes get asked by many accountants out there, how in the world can we survive just doing sales tax? But uh, it's pretty uh, pretty intricate and and uh, it's uh, quite a niche that we have here. And you must be pretty busy these days. Oh, yeah. Um, everybody wants to know how this impacts them. And, um, you know, whether it be accountants and bookkeepers or whether it be, you know, sellers themselves. And, and it's not just, uh, you know, e-commerce sellers. It's anybody who's a remote seller. If you're selling by telephone, if you're selling by catalog or advertising, I mean, people who had never had a responsibility to uh, register before may now have a, a responsibility. Yeah. So, so Mike, it, I think lot, ever since it's broke, it's been huge conversations, right? Obviously you're busy, but we're not even sales tax specialists. And I feel like it's dominating a lot of conversations I'm having with um, bookkeepers and accountants in this space. One fear that I think is a or, or gray area is there's this fear that it could like, tack on to services, right? Not just products. Like, so if I'm an accountant and I'm doing accounting services to somebody in another state, like can the state start making uh, rulings around that as far as from a nexus standpoint? Have you, is that part of this or is that a completely paranoid uh, discussion people uh, are having? Uh, absolutely true. Now there, there's two things we have to look at. There's taxability and nexus. So there are some states out there that actually tax accounting services at this point. So you've got uh, South Dakota, you've got Hawaii, um, you know, they they tax pretty much of everything. And there's always a push every year where we see states increasing the amounts of services they do tax. Now, you generally have to have some sort of nexus in those states. So unless previously to this point, unless you were in a state that actually taxed accounting services, um, you, you didn't have to worry about it. You could have clients all over across the country. But Nexus, by the way, just means some sort of link or connection. Um, and you didn't previously have a link or a connection generally with uh, these states that tax accounting services. Now, that possibility uh, definitely comes up if you do over $100,000 um, or 200 transactions in a state that could you know, create this link or connection. And if it happens to be a state that is taxing uh, accounting services, then guess what? Uh, you've you've now got to collect a tax in that state. Wow. So that's, that's really interesting uh, to me because I previously had an online accounting firm where we had employees in various different states, but, you know, that was the, those were the only states where we generally had Nexus. And so we could serve customers or companies in all 50 states and not worry about collecting sales taxes in those states. But now it's, it's if we have enough revenue, we might have to do that. Oh, I know there's a quantity threshold as well. How does that work with services, right? What's what's 200 quantity mean when I'm providing accounting services? Is that invoices or something? In, invoices is the way that I think that we're going to be uh, looking at that measure. So. Interesting. So, you know, we would invoice on a monthly basis, our customers. So I guess if I had, um, you know, 20 clients in South Dakota and I'm invoicing them monthly. Now I've got Nexus 
uh, according to their threshold. But then you would just change the quarterly billing and bypass the whole thing, <laughs> right? And I've actually had two conversations today about that. So uh, they weren't the uh, accountants, but there were companies looking to avoid those thresholds. And, and that is something that people are, are seriously thinking of doing, and it would work. And and so my employer is a software company. I know that there are some states that collect sales tax on software, even on software as a service, which we are. So, you know, software access via a web browser over the Internet. I guess we're going to have to worry about collecting tax in every state now, right? Well, again, it comes down to taxability. So if we're talking about software as a service, there's roughly right about 20 states or so that uh, tax software as a service. And, you know, you'd have to worry about collecting tax where what you sell is taxable. Um, we may start to see an expansion of what states tax, but that's a separate topic. Um, but yes, absolutely. You you now have a responsibility anywhere you cross these thresholds and what you're doing is taxable to collect that tax. Lots to worry about or at least think about. Um, you know, we've at the very least, we all need to be cognizant of what our sales into a state are and what uh, the number of transactions are. And when the state's actually imposing the actual requirements, I mean, some states are starting July 1st, some aren't starting until January 1st, and some aren't even far enough along uh, to have even complemented it yet. So. Only about 17 states uh, actually have economic uh, nexus uh, standards at this point. Mike, what do you kind of see the impact on small business owners is? So if I have some sort of e-commerce business and I'm, you know, I'm selling more than that 200 transaction uh, number in multiple, multiple, multiple states, like, is it going to be just like a tracking burden and a filing burden and expense burden to where it might Maybe I'm not saying you could put me out of business, but I would definitely feel the burden of this, like financially and time wise. Uh, it 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 could, but uh, you know, just because a state says you should do something, doesn't always mean that it makes good business sense to do so. So let's say that you cross the two hundred uh, two hundred transaction threshold in a state, uh, but you're selling five dollar items. And 200 times five, that's $1,000. And, you know, the cost of compliance with that is going to be greater than the amount of tax penalty and interest if uh, you just wait for the state to come and find you. So we've got to look at this, um, you know, with a, a grain of salt. Um, does it actually make sense to do what the state is telling us to do? Now, the larger your sales get, then, yeah, there's a point where it's silly not to um, comply. And you've got, you know, a lot of great, you know, platforms out there now uh, that make compliance um, a, a lot easier. I mean, it's it's not easy. I understand it's a, it's a pain in the neck, but I think we, we need to resign ourselves to the fact that, unfortunately, sales tax is going to play a bigger part in our businesses. And we got to work those additional costs into our, our business models. Yeah, it just sounds like for our listeners, you know, accountants and bookkeepers um, and advisors that are out there, like this is a client by client conversation and decision. Like you just can't, hey, here's how we're going to handle sales tax across my entire firm for every client. It's like an individual, it's, it's really an advising decision yeah. kind of in a way. Now. Absolutely. And here's, you know, when we're talking about speaking to your clients, uh, there's been a lot of misinformation out there over the years. And, you know, let's look at Amazon sellers. That's a big part of the e-commerce market. And they, uh, a, a lot of thought is that inventory doesn't create nexus. Well, it doesn't really matter what I believe. It doesn't really matter what, you know, these uh, sellers believe. It doesn't matter what their accountants or bookkeepers believe. It matters what the states believe. And the states believe that inventory does create nexus. And now um, when the states are emboldened at this point, they just got a big win that they've been trying to get for over 20 years. And the old nexus is still there. They haven't done away with it. So these states, when they are uh, stepping up their uh, discovery efforts, when they're looking for your clients, um, they're not just going to be looking for these new thresholds. They're going to be looking for... Um, whether they've had nexus for other reasons prior to this. And it's those prior reasons 
that can open you up to past liability. I mean, if you've had inventory in a warehouse in uh, California for six years, California is going back six years. And, and they're currently, they've been doing it for the last four years. So when we have these conversations with our clients, we don't want to just say, okay, based on the economic thresholds, here's what we got to do going forward. But we really have to start asking the questions, what's your business model look like? Um, have you had independent contractors in states? Uh, that's another one that trips up a, a lot of businesses. Um, you've got to look at the business in its entirety. I mean, if someone's got a wholesale uh, side of the business and then they started selling on Amazon or on their own website, um, the activities of the wholesale business can create a uh, nexus for the retail business. Uh, uh, business there. So we've really got to, you know, when we have this conversation, we've got to start thinking outside of the box. And there's lots of good resources out there. There's lots of uh, charts, matrices that can help you have these conversations. I think we're going to share some uh, from uh, my website here that uh, can help you, you know, track uh, these thresholds. But it's got to be more than just looking at the results of this uh, ruling because uh, your clients uh, uh, could be at risk if they haven't been paying attention to the nexus issues up until this point. So, Mike, it sounds like from what you're saying that in order to do all of this analysis, you really need a lot of information to be collected. You know, where are we shipping orders? How much quantity? How much dollar amount into these different areas? Whether or not we have different types of nexus in these different jurisdictions. So, do you have any best practices from a technology standpoint, from a system standpoint for small business owners and accountants as to how should they be collecting all this information and well, what should they be collecting? First of all, if you're working with Amazon, Amazon's reporting functionality is not great. So um, it's it's you can go in there, you can pull up a report. It's called the Inventory Event Detail Report, uh, but they don't tell you what state to give you an airport code. That's how they you know, show their warehouses. It's the nearest airport. <laughs> airport yeah. Yeah. So you got, you, you got to download the, uh, the, uh, the information. It comes out in a text file and then you have to convert the text file to a spreadsheet. Then you got to sort the spreadsheet, you know, by the earliest date and by these airport codes. And then you got to look up the airport codes. So the first time I, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, the first time I did that, it took me about 18 hours and it was, it was horrible. And that was, you know, I don't know, six, six years or so ago. Now there's uh, a lot of services out there that you can use. Uh, A2X Accounting, um, they, uh, they have some great reporting functionality uh, that can take the data out of Amazon and put it into uh, other platforms. Um, and one of the things that they do is uh, for $29, they'll actually do all that work for you. So if you... You know, you might be a little bit quicker with your spreadsheets than I am, but I'd rather pay twenty nine dollars than do eighteen hours worth of work any day. Yeah, same here. Um, and then you have platforms, you know, uh, like uh, Avalara, uh, their trust file division. They now offer a free um, uh, inventory event detail report. Uh, you've got companies, um, you know, uh, lots of similar companies that offer. Uh, Taxstar has a. a uh, similar service. So uh, you can go into Amazon, but it takes a lot of time. These other companies out there, um, it, it makes the job a lot easier. Um, you want to know where your inventory has been. That's the first thing. Number two, you want something that can break down the sales by state. And again, um, if I go into Amazon, I'm generally pulling the Amazon fulfilled and invent, excuse me, Amazon fulfilled sales report. But uh, you can only pull 30 days at a time, and it's not broken down by state. So it's a lot of work to get the data into a format that you need. So I would look at, again, one of these other services that just will make your life so much easier. Um, and I, I, I want to point this out. You don't have to be a sales tax expert. Um, in order to talk to your clients, you just have to know enough to start the conversation. And if you're looking and there is, uh, you know, a large number of sales in one of these states that 
uh, has passed these requirements or they've got some inventory there, then you can decide what to do. I mean, if you've got the knowledge, then continue moving forward. But if not, then you can call in someone to be the subject matter expert. I mean, we, we don't have to all know everything. I mean, if you ask me about federal returns, uh, I'd embarrass us all. Um, so I've got to pull in a, you know, a, a federal tax expert when we have issues there. Um, but, you know, a lot of uh, accountants and bookkeepers I talk to, they try to avoid this subject because they're, they're not comfortable with it. And your clients aren't expecting you to know all of the answers. They just want you to, to understand that they're you know, let them know that there could be potential problems. I think that's the biggest issue right now. So I think in one of your blog posts, you mentioned uh, a little a little reference of like maybe one day Amazon for all the Amazon sellers will just collect all this and file it and pay it and handle this for us. Like what's your thoughts on these mega platforms and them doing this for the as a service for their sellers, if you think of yeah, it that I, way. I think that Amazon will eventually do that. But just like uh, it took years for Amazon to collect uh, sales tax on all of their own sales, um, I think the same process is going to happen uh, with third-party sales. And the reason why is, you know, states like California right now are going after Amazon for the past sales. They're saying you should have been collecting this. And there's a lawsuit. So Amazon really can't start doing this until um, the, the way is paved. So, you know, Washington has made it easy and Pennsylvania has made it easy. Oklahoma, they've said, hey, you just got to worry about the sales tax going forward. Um, and, you know, by the way, we passed the statute. You have to do this. So there's a lot of deals that are going to have to be cut. Some states have to change their mentality right now. Um, they may not be allowed to do it, so they got to work out a special deal. Uh, but eventually it'll happen. But even when it does happen, um, having a platform collect for you is not a cure-all. And uh, let's look at Washington. Perfect example. Sellers there are realizing that it's not made their life easier. If anything, it's made it more complicated. In Washington, you have two taxes on the sales tax form. You've got the sales tax, which Amazon is collecting and remitting on behalf of third-party sellers. But there's the business and occupation tax or B&O tax. Now, it's only 0.47%, but uh, the state of Washington says that you've got to be registered in collecting that. Um, so if you're already registered, uh, you report 100% of your sales on that return. Uh, you figure out how much business and occupation tax you owe. Uh, then you carry 100% of your sales down to the sales tax portion. You figure out what the sales tax uh, would be. And then you take a credit for the tax that Amazon paid for you. To me, that's not simplifying things. It's just added extra steps and made it more confusing. The, the worst part, though, is if you're not registered, it's made it that much easier for the state to find you. I mean, right at their fingertips, the state of Washington has a breakdown by seller. Um, you know, they haven't shared this information yet, to the best of my knowledge. But with Amazon now turning over information to states, there's always the possibility that Washington gets this. They say, OK, this person's remitting sales tax, but they're not remitting the B&O. And all of a sudden, Washington's calling you and say, hey, I want a copy of your inventory event detail report. And I'm going to go back seven years and see how long your inventory is going to be here. Then I'm going to want the B&O tax for that entire period, plus all of the back sales tax. Because Washington's already told us that the sellers are still on the hook for the past exposure. And, you know, so to me, it's... It's not a win. It's it's at best more confusing, and it, for those not registered, more dangerous. That definitely sounds like uh, not a good situation to be in. It's scary. Yeah. And a lot of the discussion, of course, has been around um, you know the negative aspects of this decision for online retailers, um, and of course, even you know brick and mortar retailers who sell online. Mike, are there any positives to this, this decision? Um, yeah, one thing we've been hearing is how this is going to kill business. And uh, Overstock.com, someone who has fought sales tax for years and they've limited their 
um, their footprint, you know, where they actually have physical locations because they didn't want to have to mess with sales tax. They put out this announcement and said, hey, you know, we've resigned ourselves. Uh, we got to collect sales tax everywhere. We're going to start immediately. We're going to not wait until the uh, states impose these thresholds. And now we're free to go and open up uh, facilities all across the country. We don't have to worry about the sales tax. So, you know, from the state's point of view, that's a, a double whammy. If you're in the public, now you've got more jobs coming into the state. Um, so, you know, you can find the uh, the silver linings in here. And uh, by the way, we, we're talking about how negative this can be. Um, it's nothing to panic about. Yes, we, we need to pay attention but it's nothing to panic about. There are ways forward uh, where we can protect ourselves, where we can protect our clients. Cool. I, I love that when you say there's anything to panic about, because like I think you were saying you you have 20 new cl uh, client phone calls you got yesterday just about this. You're getting tons of inbound questioning, and but I can hear it in your voice. You're not panicking. It's it's like you're totally cool and chill. It's amazing. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Hey, and I think it's something we definitely need to pay attention to. I mean, we can't ignore it. Uh, we can't hope that it goes away. Um, we uh, we have to be cognizant of it. But again, um, let's let's figure it out. Let's figure out what our responsibilities are, and and you know move forward and and don't panic with it. Got it. So, Mike, for anybody that um, wants to track you down, I think you have a couple of websites. I think you have some charts. Like, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you on Twitter, or your website? Go ahead and let us the yeah on, listeners on the know. website. Um, we actually right now are doing uh, free consultations. You know, I, I want to get the uh, education out there, so they can go to our website, which is salestaxandmore.com, dot com, and they can you know just schedule a consult. Tell us what their fears are, and then we can set them a send them a link, and they can schedule a free conversation. They can call us directly. The phone numbers are on the website there. Um, I am uh, on LinkedIn. Um, if you're on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me and shoot me an IM. Uh, Facebook pages, uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty much all over the place. And then I think you were talking about salestaxsupport.com. Is that just a, a bulletin board for people to chat about that? Um, these types it's of issues. a place where um, rather than you having to go out to a bunch of different sales tax experts, uh, individual websites, uh, they consolidate everything. So they have, I don't know, maybe 25 different sales tax experts there who put out one or two pieces a week. And uh, they're pretty informative. They're, they're educational. Uh, they're not, you know, looking for uh, ways to increase their business. I mean, they, they put the knowledge out there. And if you like what they're saying, then hopefully they will, uh, um, you will utilize them if you need any services. And there's also a way to uh, request uh, appointments with different sales tax sellers uh, at the end of each one of their blog posts. So I've got a, a number of uh, blogs that I uh, actually do on that website. I do one for services. We talked about services early. I just started that blog post. So we'll be covering services. Um, and then uh, I cover drop shipping, which is a big, big issue for a lot of people. And then e-commerce. So those are the three blogs that I have on sales tax support. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you as always, David. And uh, we'll chat again next week. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the opportunity. See you later, everybody.